Psalms 44, verse 4. Thou art my king, O Father. Command deliverances for Jacob. Hallelujah. We praise the name of our Heavenly Father for the strength of his mighty arm and because he is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. We are continuing to look at the name of the Father and the name of the Son in a series we call To Whom is the Arm of the Father Revealed? Part one of the series is called, What's in a Name? This is part two, called the letter A, or Aleph, and the name A. In part one, we found out that names are not just arbitrary labels. A name is the record of one's existence. In addition to your given name, it includes all the names that you are called, including titles and attributes. It represents all the works of your hand. It is the name that you made for yourself as witnessed by heaven and earth. We also found out that the Creator's name includes all of His titles and attributes and represent the works of His hand as well. In part two, we will focus on the progenitor of the first name or title that our Father was probably called by man. In fact, it is the progenitor of all His names. It is the equivalent of saying Heavenly Father. By the end of the series, we want to be able to answer the famous question posed in Proverbs 30. What is the Father's name? And what is the Son's name? If thou canst tell. As always, all verses are from the King James Version of the Bible, unless it is otherwise noted. Psalms 124 verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Father who made heaven and earth. This statement is a fact. Our help is in the name of the Father. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Father, our mighty one, is one Father. Our Father is one. He is one creator, one king, one mighty one, one holy one, one Father to us all. That much, many of us already know. But what does the Father mean by the following verses? Isaiah 52, verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Why do we need to know the Creator's name in order to know that it is Him speaking. Maybe Ezekiel can help us. Ezekiel 39, verses 6 and 7. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Father. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Father, the Holy One in Israel. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. 
the father seems to be saying that his name will be known because of the act that he did against Magog. I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. His actions, the works of his hand, will make his name known. The Father will be known by his works, by his reputation. Zechariah 14, verse 9. And the Father shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Father, and his name one. Here we read the Father's title. He is not the Lord, but the King, King of all the earth. In that day there shall be one King, and his name one. In part one, we said that our Father has one name, one record of his existence. In this verse, the Father himself is letting us know that he is one King and his name one. Today, we will go back to school and become little children again so that we can try to understand this phrase a little bit better. His name one. And so, what's the first thing that a child learns in school? The alphabet. Today we will look at the first letter of the first alphabet, the letter I, and consider how it relates to the father and to his name. The Messiah said, Knock, and it shall be open to you. Today, we are knocking. We are knocking on the doors of Hebrew kindergarten. The letter A and the name A. In part one, we define the word name in the Oxford Dictionary and we define the word name as used in the Bible. Now that we have a better understanding of the definition of the word name, we can take a closer look at the different names that the Creator is called. The first known name of our Creator was first written down by man using the very first alphabet of the very first language. This first of first was also the first letter of that alphabet. Ah, called Aleph in today's Hebrew. It is pronounced Ah, like the Ah in Father. This is undoubtedly one of the first names by which we call the Creator. We called him Ah, and it basically means Father. This name was first expressed in pictograph form. The picture used was the drawing of the head of an ox. This chart shows the letter A. As we can see, the first symbol used to represent the letter A is the picture of the head of an ox. This picture was used for several hundred years. By around the time of King David, around 1000 BCE, we see that the symbol had been modified to the point where it looks very similar to the capital letter A that is used in the Western world today. This is where the Latin A comes from. This symbol would also produce the symbol used to represent the number one today. In the characteristic section, we see that the letter A means strong, power, leader. From these meanings, we can see why the letter A 
was also used to represent the Creator. He is all of those things, a strong, powerful leader. This chart also shows the name of the letter is Ah, and the sound that it makes is Ah, like the Ah in Father. Again, the first symbol used for the letter Ah is the pictograph of an ox. Pictographs are very, very descriptive. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. A pictograph is very rich and deep in meaning. The ancient words that were written using ancient Hebrew pictographs are far more powerful and easier to decipher than modern words, which are composed of arbitrary symbols or characters. In fact, the entire set of symbols used to write the Hebrew alphabet and to construct Hebrew words was expressed using pictographs. In the Hebrew language, words and documents are written from right to left. In this alphabet chart of the Paleo-Hebrew pictograph script, we can look at the original names of the letters and get a good idea of what each letter probably sounded like in the days of the ancient Hebrew of Abraham. In the ancient Hebrew, from right to left, we read Ah, Ba. Ga, da, ha, wa. Za, ka, ta, ya, ka, la. Ma, na, sa, ai, pa, taza. Kwa, ra, sha, and da. Some letters had or would take on additional sounds over time. Language, or the ability to talk and communicate, is a gift of the Creator. In a manner not seen among any other creature in the earth, language allowed man to talk to our Heavenly Father even from the very day of our creation. The first alphabet is a reflection of this special relationship. Every letter was formed out of an expression of the Father towards his creation. Ah is the first letter. Da is the last letter. Note that the letter Ah is a part of every ancient Hebrew letter. This is clearly seen in the name of the letters and the sound that each letter makes. The letter A is even a part of the Hebrew letter I or Ayin in modern Hebrew, phonetically spelled A-I in English. Being a part of every letter in every Hebrew word means that the letter Ah is either silent or it is sounded out. It may be written in the word or not written at all. For example, the word spelled Yah-Ha or yod He in modern Hebrew and Y-H in English is Yah. The letter A, though not written, is very much a part of the word and the sound that the word makes. In another example, the letters used to write the Hebrew word for upon is I, la, ayin, lamed. This corresponds to the letters I. L in English, but instead of pronouncing it with the I sounds that are found in the words ill 
or island, it is pronounced with an R sound. Al. Each Hebrew letter, when they were first formed, had a special meaning in relationship to the Creator. The letter that best exemplifies the Creator Himself is the letter A. This is probably the reason that we see an attachment of every letter to the first letter, A. We visually see and phonetically hear the letter A in every other letter, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha, etc. This is clear in the script of the ancient Hebrew, but the relationship still holds today. As such, each of the first words formed by these letters grew out of that relationship that every letter had to the letter A and to the Creator. Some of these first words would become root words, what we might call primitive words. In the ancient Hebrew, a single letter can be a word. Most early root words were formed using one, two, or three letters. The root words would then spin off variations into the many other words that would come after, including nouns, verbs, adjectives, and also prefixes and suffixes. Pictographs are great because the picture that is used to represent each letter is instrumental to helping us understand what the letter means. If we understand what each letter means, then when the letters are combined to form words, we can understand what the words mean. Here is a rendition of the Ten Commandments using pictographs from the site ancienthebrew.org. The first alphabet is widely called the Phoenician alphabet. It has 22 letters and forms the basic construction blocks of the ancient Hebrew written language. The very word alphabet is derived from the names later given to its first two letters, Aleph and Bet. The last letter came to be called Tav. The Greek alphabet came from the Hebrew and it follows it very closely. Its first two letters are called Alpha and Beta. The last letter is called Omega. In fact, almost all known alphabets were ultimately derived from the Hebrew alphabet. This chart shows how the Arabic, Syriac, and Greek alphabets all follow the Hebrew very closely. The Hebrew alphabet begins Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He. The Arabic alphabet begins Aleph, Ba, Gim, Da, and Ha. The Greek alphabet begins Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Note how the Arabic, Hebrew, Syriac, and Greek alphabets all begin with Aleph and Bet, while the rest of the first eight letters are practically the same. The numerical value of each number is also given, and they are the same. Again, all of these alphabets came out of the Hebrew. When we say that the Creator is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tav, we are also saying that He is the A and the Ta. They each mean that he is the first and the last. And so, the verse that reads in Isaiah 48 verse 12, 
Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my call. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. That verse could have been written as, I am he. I am the ah. I also am the ta. And in Revelation 22, verse 13, that reads, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, can also be read, I am A and Da, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Why? Because A and Da are the first and the last letters of the very first alphabet of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, the same alphabet that was used during the days of Abraham, Moses, even up to David. This illustration shows the A and the Ta together. This picture found online exemplifies the notion that the first letter of the alphabet is represented of and is therefore a name of the Father. It reads, Aleph, the infinite eternal one, the supreme authority. If we can call the Father Aleph or Alpha or call him the beginning or the first or the one, then we can certainly call him Ah, or the Ah. The letter Ah is also the name Ah, and it originates or is an embodiment of all of these well-known names. The Aleph, the Alpha, the First, and the One. The First is often called the father. It is very common to use phrases such as the father of a science or the father of a country when talking about the first person to make something or to make something known. When we call the creator the first or the alpha, we are also calling him the father. Therefore, calling the creator, the A, is equivalent to calling him the first, equivalent to calling him the father. We can chart the evolution of the symbol for the letter A through the ages. It started out as the picture of an ox head and over time became the Hebrew or Phoenician Aleph the Arabic and Aramaic Aleph, and the modern Hebrew Aleph. It also became the Greek Alpha, the Latin A, the English letter A, and the letter A or A of many other languages. Along the way, it also became the Arabic number one that we still use in the Western world today. The following chart helps to illustrate. As we can see, the symbol of the head of an ox was modified by the Middle Hebrew period to a form that produced the Greek and Roman A, and also the number one, which was taken directly from the Arabic number one, which itself was derived from the Arabic Aleph. A quick look at the next chart also shows this. The symbol used for the modern Arabic letter Aleph still looks like the number one that is used in the Americas and in much of the world today. Conclusion, the letter A is the progenitor of the first letters in almost all alphabets. The letter A is also intrinsically related to the number one. Symbolically, this has been preserved 
by our use of the Arabic symbol for the number one, derived from Aleph or Ah. As this chart illustrates, the Canaanite language, which itself is the same Hebrew language spoken by Abraham, produced the prototype for the alphabets of almost all of the African, Asian, and Western alphabets. Thus, the Hebrew alphabet is the progenitor of the European, Arabic, and Semitic alphabets. Likewise, the Hebrew language is the progenitor of all the European and Arabic languages, as well as the many languages that have been spoken by the many, many nations that came out of Jacob, including those of the Native Americans. The vast majority of all the languages found in the Americas upon the arrival of Columbus can be traced back to Hebrew through the children of Jacob. They all sang Hallelujah and used the name Yah among their names for the Creator. The letter A being the first letter was used to represent the first being who is of course the father of all the living and the father of all things including of all knowledge and also the father of man the creator the drawing of an ox head was used as the symbol for the letter a because the ox was the symbol of strength and power. This is in part because the ox was used to pull the farm equipment that cultivated the land. Its strength was essential for plowing the field, for powering wells, and for pulling heavy loads across long distances. On the farm, the position of the ox is usually in front of the equipment or wagon. This means that it leads the way. Hence, the ox is also the symbol of the leader or the head, the father. This fact is explored in the website ancienthebrew.org where we read Aleph, pictograph, ox head, meanings, power, authority, strength, sound, a, a. History and Reconstruction. The original pictograph for this letter is a picture of an ox head representing strength and power from the work performed by the animal. This pictograph also represents a chief or other leader. When two oxen are yoked together for pulling a wagon or plow, one is the older and more experienced one who leads the other. Within the clan, tribe, or family, the chief or father is seen as the elder who is yoked to the others as the leader and teacher. We see the use of the words strength, power, father, and leader to define the letter A. The letter A is a symbolic representation of all of these attributes. Back then, life centered on the farm. The ox was universally recognized as a symbol of strength and leadership and of being out in front, of being the head. David reminds us of how to symbolize the father. Psalms 68, verses 34 and 35. Ascribe ye strength unto our mighty one. His excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O mighty one, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The mighty one of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be the mighty one. 
David asks us to ascribe strength to the Father. Our ancestors did this by using the symbol of an ox, the symbol of strength to represent the first letter and to represent the Father's name. Another verse illustrates further. In Numbers 24, verse 8, in the English Revised Version, we read, The Mighty One bringeth him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces and smite them through with his arrows. Here, Moses is comparing the strength of the father to that of a powerful wild ox. For those of us who use the King James Version, instead of saying wild ox, it reads, he hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. If we go to a site like QBible.com, we can look at the Masoretic Hebrew text to find the Hebrew word that was used in Numbers 24 verse 8 and translated as the word unicorn in the King James Version. The word is Ra'am or Rem, spelled ra a ma or resh aleph mem next to the word unicorn we find number 7214 this means that the original word can be found as word number 7214 in the strong's hebrew dictionary when we go to the dictionary we find the word rem it is a primitive or very ancient word that means a wild bull from its conspicuousness. A wild bull is, of course, a ox. It also means a unicorn, likely the rhinoceros. The King James Version translates it as unicorn, while most of the other versions translate it as ox. You can say that the father's strength is like that of a mighty wild ox, and the strength of his horn is like that of the horns of a unicorn. As is exemplified in Deuteronomy 33 verse 17, where we read, his glory is like the firstling of his flock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. as is exemplified in Deuteronomy 33, verse 17, where we read, His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. We see in this verse that the father's glory and strength is compared to an ox and a unicorn. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, that is an ox, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. The use of the symbol of the ox head was so that we could ascribe strength to the Creator, just like David said. The pictograph of the ox head as the symbol of the first letter A represents the first letter in a series of 22 letters. It therefore symbolizes the first and the number one and all the qualities which the number one represents. One is assigned 
to the first of all things. One is assigned to the quality of being unique, the state of being unequaled and unparalleled. One describes the state of being identical. For example, the Messiah and the Father are one in spirit. We also strive to be one with the Messiah and the Father in spirit. In mathematics, any number multiplied by one is that number itself. Any number divided by one is that number itself. One is thus a factor of all numbers, just like the Father is present in all things. One represents the singularity of the Father. The Father is unique because there is none other like him. The Father is infinite, infinite in power, presence, wisdom, time, etc., etc., in the website hopeofisrael.org, we read that E.W. Bollinger says of the number one in his fascinating book, Number in Scripture. There can be no doubt as to the significance of this primary number. As a cardinal number, it denotes unity. As an ordinal, it denotes primacy. Unity being indivisible and not made up of other numbers is therefore independent of all others and is the source of all others. So with the deity, the great first cause is independent of all. All stand in need of him and he needs no assistance from any. Page 50. Bollinger adds to this clear description the first is the only one. There cannot be two first. Man ignorantly speaks of the two first or the three first when he really means the first two or the first three, etc. The word of God does not thus ignorantly speak. He is the only one. He is first in priority of time. He is first in superiority of rank, and he is first in absolute supremacy. Page 51. And so, we see the importance of the number one when we are talking about the Creator. Because of its many properties, one is a logical choice for use as a symbol of the Creator. He is the one unique being the first of all living things and of all that exists. He is the one who is everywhere and is a factor in all our lives. Our Father is unique in power and in strength. There is none other like him. He is the one true mighty one. Next to him, no one else is mighty. He is the one true holy one. Next to him, no one else is holy. He is the one, the living one. Next to him, there is no other. Malachi 2 verse 10. Have we not all one father? Hath not one mighty one created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Ephesians 4 verse 6. One mighty one and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Our ancestors recognized these attributes of the Father and symbolized them by calling him Ah, the Ah, the First, the Father, the Power, the Infinite, the One. We said that the letter Ah is present in every other letter. This presence of the letter A in every other letter is similar to how the Father himself 
is present in everything and is everywhere. As I is in every letter, the number one is in every number. Indeed, that the letter I and the number one share this special characteristic has already been immortalized in the symbol used for the number one itself. As we noted earlier, our symbol for the number one is taken directly from the symbols of the letter I. The Father is not only the One, but He is also the Alpha, the Aleph, the A. Again, using A to denote the Father is every bit as appropriate as using the phrase the first or the one or the alpha. In fact, it might be more appropriate because I is the original name of the letter. I is the word that Abraham and Moses used for the letter Aleph. We'll summarize by reading from the website hallelujah.nl from the draft of a book called The Written Language of Abraham, Moses, and David, a study of the pictographic roots and basic notions in the underlying fabric of the earliest biblical script by Andre H. Rusma. The Paleo-Hebrew Aleph is derived from a picture of the head of an ancient ox or auroch. A first basic notion in early Old Semitic language was that of being a first, or most prominent among others, or of being unique. The object representing this notion is the head of an ox. Aleph, very simply drawn, sometimes an eye was additionally drawn in. In those days, the ox was one of the most prominent and strongest animals among the cattle. One of the meanings of the Arcadian Alpu was head of the cattle. So, that is why this notion of being the first, the powerful one, or the one most valuable was associated with the ox. In most words, written with an aleph, we recognize the notion of a powerful or first slash primary as compared to others. The symbol may also represent the object ox itself in some cases. When, in the days of old, one encountered one of those huge aurochs, the wild ox with a shoulder height of up to two meters, this was also the animal from which our domestic cows were bred, one's breath stopped in one's throat. It may well be that, therefore, the associated sound or phoneme of the ox head, ah, is the glottal stop also known as Hamza, and transliterated as an apostrophe. Often in combination with something close to our vowel A. In Paleo-Hebrew, this symbol later got somewhat styled and simplified to three strokes. From this evolved, by rotation, the Greek capital letter Alpha, A and from that our Latin capital A, the lowercase letters from the pictoscript original. Strange enough, the shape can hardly be recognized anymore in the Aleph of the later Hebrew square script. As prefix, the Aleph sign is the first person singular I. Again, I repeat. As prefix, the Aleph sign is the first 
person singular, I. In distinction to the elementary notion, language building block and symbol, the full word Aleph can be interpreted as the oxen lead into the open and is related in Hebrew to the notion of the domestication of the wild ox. A well-trained, strong animal like an ox was most useful in farming. Pronounced as Aleph, Strong's Hebrew word 504, it can mean those tamed oxen or cattle itself, or a family as following a leader in a similar way. Pronounced alf, Hebrew word number 502, it is the verb to learn, to be trained or trainable, docile, or causatively to teach, to train. Apparently, in early Arabic, it has also been seen as the first leader's mouth in the sense of not only teaching, but also relational intimacy. For quite some time, the auroch or wild ox was the strongest animal in nature. The domesticated ox was the pride among the cattle. With some training, one could easily become the first or a leader oneself. How the relationship of the same root, pronounced Aleph, word number 505, with the number 1000 came into existence is not 100% clear to me yet. Theories range from an origin via 1000 numerically or via an Aleph, first one, becoming a leader over 1000 oxen, people, or soldiers or 1,000 people being joined in a school and the leader therefore becoming a leader over 1,000 and Aleph, typically chicken and egg. Hard to find out which came first. I wonder if there is a relationship with the elephant, certainly a first or leader in the animal kingdom. Okay. That was from the site hallelujah.nl. Uh, one thing that's very interesting is that we read, um, and it's highlighted, that the letter A as a prefix is the first person singular, I. So, when we look at the phrase, I am that I am, the letter A at the beginning of the word Aya or Ahaya is the word that is translated as I. The letter A could have been used for the word I instead of the Hebrew word Ani at the end of this next verse. Isaiah 52 verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know. In that day that I am he that doth speak, behold, it is I. It could have read, behold, it is I. And the meaning would have remained the same because the I in this verse refers to the heavenly father. The subject of the entire alphabet is the father first and everything else is derived from that basic notion. Naturally, the first I is the father, ah, and then this meaning of the word ah would also be applied when used in the general population of man. To recap, the ancient Hebrew letter A, also called Aleph, 
has the following meanings as it relates to the creator of heaven and earth. Each one is also a name or attribute of the Father. The letter A and the name A. One, the first. Two, the creator. Three, the father. Four, the strong and powerful. Five, the one. Six, the omnipresent. And seven, the infinite. There we have it. The letter Ah is also a name. Ah, a name of our Father, a name of our Creator. The letter Ah and the name Ah means all of those things. And all of these things are attributes of our Father who is in heaven. They are attributes of the Creator. They are names of the Creator. Just like the Creator is the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tav, He is the A and He is the Ta. Our Father can also be called the A. Next time we will be looking at part three of our series and that is the letter Ha or He and the name A, spelled A Ha or Aleph He or in English spelled A H. See you next time. All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah.